All right, here's part two. If you're just tuning in, say where you're from. If you have any questions about stevia, about added sugars, about health generally, um, about the differences between different kinds of stevia or other uh, alternative sugar substitutes or different kinds of sugar sources like maple syrup or fruit juice or whatever, we're with one of the most knowledgeable people in the world about that, uh, Carol, who's the founder of uh, Sweetleaf. So, Carol, part two, thank you so much for uh, um, being with us today. So, what were those facts you were just relating to me? Off well, I was, just, yeah. I was just pointing out that we're really not aware of how much sugar, uh, you know, is found in the in the foods and beverages we we ingest every day. Uh, if one has a if one's a man and has a budget that of uh, a, a sugar budget, as it were, uh, of using less than thirty six grams or about one hundred and fifty calories a day. Um, <laughs> One one twelve ounce can of soda is uh, uh, about thirty nine calorie uh, thirty nine grams. Excuse me, okay. and um, so you more than used up your whole day's allotment. So what happens, uh, Carol? If I if I per, I'm vegan and I'm pretty healthy and pretty active, and I'm a mm -hmm. big guy, I'm forty two. If I eat a pint of vegan ice cream, I'm sure there's tons of sugar in that, right? <laughs> It uh, could be. I, I, I think it would depend on the particular brand. Sure, but your average pint of ice cream, like, is there, there must just, is that your daily allotment for, like, the week or something? <laughs> well, it doesn't really go by the week. Uh, the reality right. is that you need to look at it by the day, and right. yes, you would have used up uh, your opportunity there. Uh, wow. If you're a woman, you know, a woman, uh, you only have 25 grams, so uh, you do have to be quite quite uh, careful about um, uh, what kinds of foods you eat. Yogurt, plain yogurt is an excellent food. However, uh, the yogurts that uh, are mostly sold today in uh, the United States are just rampant with sugars. Um, uh, could be 20 grams in, in one four to five ounce uh, cup. Um, and uh, um, wow. you, know, you really need to look at it. And that's a small yeah. little cup, right? Four to five ounces? That's right. Just wow. a little, just one of those little individual servings. So, um, but the good news, Carol, maybe this is a good transition to touch on stevia, um, okay. is we don't have to like deprive ourselves and not ever have anything sweet. That's correct. We, there are sugar alternatives. So maybe can you walk us through like the various choices, stevia being one, and talk about the different health benefits or lack of health benefits? All right. Um, Thank you. There are a variety of sweeteners that uh, are used to uh, replace sugars. Um, there are artificial sweeteners that have been around uh, a while, uh, uh, such as aspartame, um, sucralose, which is better known as uh, Splenda, um, and uh, uh, there's um, Ace K, and they're, they're Neotame. I mean, they're just a, a number of them. Yeah. Uh, and the um, <laughs> the problem with them is that they have they have their own set of um, uh, of impacts on the body, uh, and they were really developed. Most of them were developed for other purposes, and then uh, were just um, Serendipis serendipitously used to uh, um, sweeten our foods. Stevia is different altogether. Stevia is a plant. Um, it is uh, it is indigenous to uh, actually Paraguay, but now it is cultivated throughout the world. Um, it uh, is a, uh, a plant that originally we thought had um, about 11 sweet compounds in it called glycosides. But now we know, in fact, uh, our particular scientists here have discovered the 48th uh, glycoside in stevia. Each of these little sweet compounds in the leaf uh, impacts taste and sweetness in a different way, and they're all in different percentages in the leaf. So it's knowing how to extract those that 
are sweetest in concert with one another and um, uh, and in what percentages and so forth and that's that's the value of what we do and yeah. uh, we've been at it for 35 years we wow. know this little this little plant uh, and uh, um, uh, you know it, it's really a marvelous discovery and new things are being discovered of about it uh, and about specific um, sweet compounds found in the leaf every day. So um, it's a, a marvelous alternative. Now, some people don't know as well how to use stevia uh, and how to extract it. And you do have to start with the right variety. There are about 120 uh, different varieties uh, wow. now around the world. So. Um, there's a lot of knowledge that's involved in it. So, but, Carol, question. Um, I know there's like Coca-Cola or Pepsi or something. They created a like a, like a laboratory equivalent of stevia that is not maybe as good. And then there's natural stevia. Is what Sweet Leaf is doing, is natural stevia what Sweet Leaf is doing? And is that better than what the Pepsis and the Cokes or whoever it is? You know all about that. There are many, many varieties of stevia. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, um, varieties of extract, yeah. uh, and that's what we're talking about. That's really what we use, uh, what everyone uses. Now, there, um, and some are focused these days on a particular uh, glycoside, particular sweet compound, and um, uh, we we feel that. Uh, well, we're known as the natural guys, um, and um, we feel that any product should have as few ingredients as possible, and they should all be natural or organic. We have, for the last several years, only um, used organic stevia in all of our products. Oh, I was going to um, ask. That's great. And uh, we, we're very, very careful about monitoring the um, uh, the cultivation and the um, processing of stevia. So uh, we yeah. we take great pride in that, and yeah. we've won um, to date. I think it's twenty nine awards um, in the nation and internationally for taste and innovation, and uh, um, we we take that as a real responsibility. So one, one point, Carol, uh, we, you know, for many, many years, we and myself go to Expo West and Expo East, these huge forums for all these natural, so-called natural, some of them are amazing, some of them not so much, uh, foods that are sold in Safeway and Whole Foods and everywhere, um, or maybe I should call it Amazon now. And, um, and there's every year the hot issue is like, what are the food trends? And obviously sugar free is a big food trend like gluten free or paleo or whatever. But what I, I'm always doing, I'm interviewing all the founders of these companies and many of the companies were started last week to take advantage of a food trend and then their goal is to sell out to some big uh, food conglomerate in a year or two and make 45 or 100 million dollars or whatever. You've been doing this for 35 years so right there I just want to give you a little honor and say that you're not a Johnny come lately just trying to take advantage of consumers, which is a word I don't even like, of human beings. Um, you're actually offering something you feel good about and it's organic so it's not sprayed with chemicals. Um, I do have like 20, I don't know if this is a good time, I have like 20 questions from elephant readers. Okay. If you're up for it. And, uh, oh, we, and fine. What's that? I said that would be fine. Great. Yep. I, I, I just would just quickly Please. interject here that um, every business is is in business uh, to succeed. Sure. But at the same time, um, we aren't about just selling products. We're about um, helping people make healthier choices uh, to improve their quality of life and the longevity of their life. And um, we, we count as um, most important to us 
uh, the comments that we get uh, over and over again and have throughout the years of people saying thanks that um, various ones of our products have indeed changed their life or their spouse's life or their child's or their parents or their friends. Um, but someone important to them has um, been benefited, and that's what what truly matters to us. And uh, we we look at that as as um, as our opportunity and as our responsibility to offer the best quality products uh, of our kind. And we know we do that, and even our competitors will say that. <laughs> And that um, uh, we want to help people and make a difference. And we're also concerned about the people we work with uh, throughout the world to do so. Mm. And, uh, you know, we have a mission that sounds a little, um, maybe a, a little maudlin or overly sentimental, but it has great meaning for us. And that's... Um, to make the world a sweeter place in a variety of ways. And um, uh, we want people to make better for you choices that still give them the quality of life and the enjoyment uh, of, of something sweet and great tasting. And, um, and we have a conversion um, chart that can show them how to use our products in place of sugar in that in that product, in that food or beverage, and uh, and have equally as enjoyable experience. So I just offer that. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, Elephant itself is mission driven, so there's nothing maudlin or cheesy about actually caring. Uh, it only sounds or feels maudlin or cheesy because it's so rare, sadly, in the business world to both want to be successful financially, which is great and fine and to be mission driven and actually be a benefit. And it's a growing movement of companies to want to do both, to do well and to do good. Um, so thank you for that. Um, and I just to underline that point, like in the New York Times going a month without sugar, they say, here's a, just a little quote so people remember why this is so vital, like literally vital, meaning life giving. Our national sugar habit is the driving force behind the diabetes and obesity epidemics and maybe a contributing factor to cancer and Alzheimer's. Yes, it's, it's true. And again, a heart disease is the number one killer in the United States. And indeed, uh, excess sugar in our diets is is without a doubt now yeah. um, a cardiovascular risk. Right. So, so if we care about fellow Americans and people all over the world, you know, like not to get political or anything, but the the, the biggest enemy isn't some other out there. It's, you know, we shouldn't allow sugar products to travel into the U.S., right? Just a little <laughs> little political joke there. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and as you mentioned in part one, there is an aggressive, this is a quote from the New York Times, an aggressive well-financed campaign by the sugar industry for decades uh, masked the reality that um, sugar in particular is the number one problem in modern diets, uh, as they say. So these statues blow me away. And I'm coming from Boulder, Colorado, which we're one of, I think, like five, you probably know better than me, but like Chicago, Philadelphia, Oakland, San Francisco, Mexico, France, we've, Ireland, Britain, maybe, we've all banned, or no, we're all taxing sweetened drinks. Mm -hmm. And as you already made clear, it's added sugars are the real problem, not sugar inherent to, say, fruit or whatever. That's why elephants... Yep. To the consternation of our readers, Elephant has consistently blogged that maybe drinking fruit juices or uh, juicing, which is so popular, taking out all the fiber is not necessarily a healthy thing. Um, so let me just uh, run a few questions by you. It, um, and again, I'm here with Carol, who's the co-founder of Leading Natural Stevia Company, or Stevia, I'm beginning to gather, um, uh, Sweet Leaf. So here's... Um, Here's a question from my friend Maureen, a reader. I gave up sugar completely, including honey and agave. Stevia was the last to go, and the withdrawal was really tough, the toughest. I broke out like a teenager. My skin was on fire. So question, 
Is stevia hypoallergenic or do they acknowledge that some folks may have an allergy or that other or that there are potentially addictive properties? All right. Um, there is no food, be it strawberry or uh, um, any other food you want to mention, that cannot be, um, you know, um, an allergic problem for any one particular individual. Sure. The stevia, in about uh, 1,700 studies now, has uh, been shown that uh, it is uh, extraordinarily safe and uh, and actually uh, good for the human body. Uh, it is not only um, appreciated by uh, the FDA, but uh, uh, also around the world. Okay. And um, so that's great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so some people go ahead. Generally, happen. You know, that's important to think uh, about as well. That um, one would really need to look at the entire diet at the time that that you tried stevia uh, to see if there were something else that could be right. uh, happening there. Um, but that's know. fine. So this we can kind of treat this like a speed round, not to be speedy, but just. I, I appreciate that everyone's going to be addicted to something. Um, so, here's a specific question from Hillary. I have seen some studies using stevia to fight chronic Lyme disease. Do you have any information on this? I would say no. Uh, thank you. No, I love that. Uh, uh, I have seen that that study uh, just this past week, as a matter of fact, mm. and. Um, uh, there are those who who have had an experience, a very positive experience, but we we don't uh, we don't use stevia to prescribe for any particular disease. Okay. Well, not over claiming health benefits is a mark of uh, integrity. So I appreciate that. Um, what? How, here's a great question, also from Hillary. How is processed stevia made into a white powder like sugar different from stevia extracts? Well. Actually, we're still talking about stevia extracts. Okay. The difference, uh, now, there are many different ways to process stevia. Um, how does it become white? Well, in, in the extraction process, the chlorophyll from the leaf drops off, and so it's no longer green, it's white, but um, uh, um, it still is a healthful product. So Okay, great. Here's uh, just a uh, compliment from Holly. Thank you. Uh, looking forward to hearing more of the interview. I switched over to Stevia a few years ago, and I love it. I also cook and bake with it, along with pure organic maple syrup, which you said also could be a problem since it's an added sugar, and local organic honey, which has some benefits. Um, is, um, anyways, helped her be healthy. Great. Uh, yeah. Um, and she's in Latvia, and she brought your product over there. She mainly uses liquid stevia, but um, also bought the powder. Um, okay, here's a great question from uh, Domo Geshe. We grow our own stevia from herb starts, not seed, every year. Dry and powder it, and of course it is green. What happens to stevia when it is bleached, as the commercial kind is? All right, it is not bleached. Okay. Uh, it simply uh, the, it is extracted such that the chlorophyll, chlorophyll is not extracted with it, but there is no bleaching. Okay, that great. That's good to know. Thank you. Um, from Hollish again, she uh, buys sweet leaf, sweet drops, stevia clear. Is that um, that's another thing she buys? Is that a good healthy brand? And I said yes, I think so, but I don't know. Yes, it, yeah. she's buying Sweet Drops, is that what you said? Yeah, um, Sweet Drops, yep. Yes, that's our brand, and indeed it is a healthy brand. Okay. <laughs> We've been making those uh, for 22 years now. Okay, here's a sort of complicated, interesting question. John Le Lendorf, is stevia just another gateway substance that leads back to sugar? Hmm. Um, no, the answer is no, uh, because the... Um, uh, stevia actually satisfies the desire for anything sweet. Right. Uh, that makes so. sense. It's kind of like, I mean, a horrible analogy, but uh, it's kind of like a nicotine patch. 
ideally it will wean you off of sugar and, and, and provide a transition. Uh, not a great analogy since uh, it's way yummier and you can just use it ongoingly. Um, Gary, have people become diabetic using stevia? No. <laughs> no, there has been no report uh, ever um, of any such. Uh, you know, it is a, um, a product uh, that is safe for people with diabetes uh, yeah. to use, and uh, um, uh, they've had good experience with it. Okay, great. And their dietitians love it for them. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so, it's, so it's super important for those who are suffering or um, living with diabetes. Well, it, yes, it's an alternative yeah. uh, to allow them to have uh, no calories, uh, no carbs, um, and still have a sweet experience. So I think you already touched on the, this in terms of you extracting the specific, I don't know the term, but the sweet things. But Rebecca has a question. Why even bother with the clear liquid and white powder versions? Why not just stick with the unrefined brown liquid and green powder? Oh, well, there are a couple of reasons there. Uh, one is that um, there is a difference in taste. Uh, for some people, it, it has a slight uh, licorice taste, and that's not what they want in their foods. Mm -hmm. uh, the other uh, big reason is that in the United States, although not elsewhere, uh, in the United States, the um, crushed uh, or ground leaf uh, um, or simply the, what we would call the dark concentrate that is the beginning of the um, extraction process uh, is seen by the FDA as a, a dietary supplement as opposed to a food. Uh, we were the first. In, uh, to receive uh, grass or generally recognized as safe by the FDA for our processed uh, stevia and, uh, and others certainly followed months and then now years later. But um, uh, then what that allows, that grass, is that a, a product, uh, in this case stevia extract, can be then um, discussed as a food uh, and then can be used as a food in other foods. So it can be used as a sweetener in other foods. And um, so there is a difference. There's a difference between the ground uh, uh, green leaf, and uh, which is only allowed as a dietary supplement and cannot be described in any way as a food or in uh, modifying flavor, because dietary supplements don't modify flavors. Uh, in the United States. So, um, so that's why. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So here's a question. Um, are there different brands of Stevia or different, um, you know, there's like what I referred to the uh, soda companies made their own kind of chemical Stevia or something. Can you tell us about that? There, there indeed are diff um, uh, different ways of processing stevia and different brands in the market do process their stevia differently. Um, and uh, um, they have different, uh, different taste uh, effects that come. They, um, they mix it with different carriers. Stevia is a very high intensity sweetener and therefore it needs to have another um, uh, food substance uh, used with it. Uh, some use sugars. Some use um, uh, other kinds of um, uh, carriers. We're, we're very careful about the carrier we use uh, 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 as being the most helpful. Um, so there are, yes, there are indeed uh, differences between brands and there are differences between um, uh, ways of process, and so the result is different. So here's a specific follow-up question to that from Sophia, and uh -huh. uh, you're doing great. I appreciate your patience with all these questions. Sophia That's Francesca, um, she's vegan, I believe. Exactly how healthy natural is stevia? It tastes super chemically processed, and I can't bear the taste. Well, again, that would be... Um, an artifact of the brand she's using. Yeah. Uh, 
we don't have those problems, uh, and uh, uh, and and others do. Yeah. But uh, she needs to um, needs to to try a different brand and yeah. specific ours. Yeah. So I think that's you know your natural organic um, you know have a good carrier. Others are kind of creating it in a laboratory. So that's probably a, a big issue that's good for you to be clear about with uh, your fans or your new fans out there, that there are, there are wide differences among stevias, right? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's, people talk about stevia, but um, uh, there are many differences between the different brands. Right. So here's a question from Deborah. If you bake with it, what's the best way to make up for the lost volume? There's less dry ingredient in the recipe. Yes, um, that's a, um, an important question. It's possible to use applesauce, mm -hmm. to use tofu, um, and, uh, um, and we, have, uh, we have another product uh, we call sugar leaf that uh, does have some sugar in it, but it, it, it actually reduces the calories and carbs of sugar by two thirds. So for some people, wow. having um, uh, having a, a reduction is is enough for them, and it and it bakes just like sugar. It browns like sugar. It tastes like sugar. Um, it, it's really a, a, a product that chefs uh, love. So I love that applesauce. I'm vegan, so applesauce is often used in baking stuff that I'll eat, and I love it. And just a reminder, you know, I buy my applesauce at our local farmer's market. It's local apples. There's one ingredient, no added yeah. sugars. Um, so, you know, one of the points of this great New York Times article I keep referencing about going a month without sugar is that sugar is hidden in so many things, in ketchups, in, I mean, what are yeah. some of the things you don't even associate sugar with that it's in? Soy sauce? Yeah. <laughs> like, um, uh, who knew, but... Um Canned soups, sugars, hmm. cereals have an Cereal. amazing amount of sugars. Right. Uh, yogurt certainly, and um, yogurt, uh, right. spaghetti sauce, right. uh, uh, barbecue sauce. Um, you know, all kinds of things that we use every day. Cranberry and, uh, juice, it's classic. Yeah. Yeah, I used to love cranberry juice as a kid. It was like my favorite thing, and then I drank it without sugar a couple times, and I was like, you know. Well, well, yeah, it's kind of that peppered yeah. face look. Um, yeah. Yep. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, cran, cran apple juice uh, on an airplane is uh, one of the most uh, requested mm. beverages. But if you actually look, it has 60 grams of sugar in one 12 ounce can. Wow. Now, 60 grams, uh, you know, that's twice uh, um, your daily allotment. So. Right. <laughs> and again, what's the danger of going over your daily allotment, just to remind people? Well, the danger in one day is not going to make the difference. But sure. over time, um, you actually are impacting your your cardiovascular system, your the liver system, uh, the pancreas, uh, the brain, uh, and uh, it's just not something that the body is equipped to to um, to deal with well. So, so here's a live question from on Facebook Live from Sandy McGill. Why do the drops need to be refrigerated after opening? What's the danger if you don't? Um, actually, uh, they don't need to be refrigerated. Uh, they can be, but um, uh, it, um, as long as you use it within, within the, the best buy period, and that's two years for the drops, uh, you know, it, it's fine. So uh, not to be refrigerated. Here's, we used to see that, um, but now we, we realize that, that uh, it's not needful. Here's a powerful question. It gets back to your mission uh, from Denise. Hello from Manila in the Philippines. My mama's history has a family has a history of diabetes, and since then we've always been careful about our sugar consumption. They say brown sugar or wild honey are good alternatives. Is this true? Thank you. The answer um, is that brown sugar is even turbinado um, and uh, more so-called natural sugars. Um, they still have have the same problems. Uh, they still have 
have the um, uh, the calories and the carbs, and uh, and you also have the impact upon the uh, human bodily systems. So it's better to uh, to look for a healthful alternative. Yeah, and again, as you said, if it's local honey, obviously. Um, that could have some benefits in terms of allergies if it's truly raw, particularly. Uh, yes. raw, raw is not a legislated word, so you have to know what your source, but it's still yes. sugar. Same with maple syrup. Yes, it still has the same impact in the body. Wow. Uh, but you, know, uh, you, have a, you have a budget that you can use. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, um, but it's, but it's a pretty slim budget, right. so. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Only a hundred more questions. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm <laughs> kidding. Um, uh, do you think the artificial sweetener and maybe the sugar industry should, this is from Ronnie, who's a mommy, um, should have, should all have a warning label about the dangers, uh, oh. Sorry, different question. Should they have a warning label about the dangers? And specifically, uh, should artificial sweeteners have a warning label about the danger to cats and dogs so no accidents happen due to lack of awareness? Mm -hmm. um, well, that's a political question, actually. That's right. a question for the FDA. Right. Uh, and, uh, um, but there is a need for greater um, education so that uh, we as uh, um, choosers of our family um, foods can make, can make those best decisions. And, um, uh, you know, but it, but it actually is a, um, a political and agency question. Is, is she saying, is stevia dangerous for dogs or cats? No, okay. uh, but xylitol is. Example okay. that's been shown uh, a number of times now, um, and uh, uh, you know um, that's why, for instance, makers of gum or other kinds mm. of products that uh, use a lot of xylitol uh, as a an alternative to sugar mm. um, uh, have a problem because if a dog eats it, uh, it can yeah, it can bring death. It's wow. a very very difficult for the uh, the canine to to uh, process it in their bodies. So one friend, uh, Tara, said, "I love sugar with a big emoticon with hearts all over it." And I said, "It doesn't love us back." And linked that month without sugar article, which blew my mind. Um, even as someone like, as I said in the first part of this conversation, I'm not that educated about health issues because I've been lucky, at least so far, to be very active and healthy. Um, I've been able to remain somewhat ignorant um, until now. All right. Um, Kobe, I find it has an aftertaste, Stevia, like the others, such as Saccharin, although he hasn't tried your product and wonders if it has that aftertaste, like a slightly bitter metallic taste. Um, no, it does not. And we feel that the reason uh, why, um, you know, there could be many factors going into it, but it doesn't come from the stevia leaf. If you were just to take either a moist leaf directly off the plant or a dried leaf uh, where it's being kept for processing um, and just put it on your, your tongue. Mm. And what would happen is <laughs> the longer it sits there, the saliva from your mouth actually initiates the extraction process. Mm. And... Um, uh, as long as you don't bite into it, and so you're getting some of the of the veins, which have other chemicals and you know, other ingredients in them, mm -hmm. um, it, it just gets sweeter and sweeter. It isn't mm -hmm. the leaf that's doing it; it's the way it's being processed, and and uh, most probably the chemicals that are being used right. uh, by some to process. Right. And um, we have long been known uh, that that ours is a different kind of processing. And um, right. yeah. so, uh, yes, give ours a try. Yeah. And if I, if I knew your name, I'd send you some so you could try some. Uh, and uh, um, uh, it, 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 it is different depending upon who processes it and who makes it. And ours does not have that experience. 
So here's a really interesting question from David. You made the analogy uh, with uh, Big Tobacco back in the, whenever, the 50s, the Mad Men era, trying to, or maybe I made the analogy in my head, but Big Tobacco used to kind of do all these ad campaigns that doctors said it was good for you and uh, to try and kind of push back the science. David Rogers asks, how much of a fight have you had with Big Sugar and other alternative sweetener companies trying to debunk you? Well, uh, actually, uh, we, we had quite a challenge uh, when my husband first introduced Debbie to the United States um, back in 1982. Uh, and indeed, he, he championed uh, this uh, little plant um, uh, before the FDA and before the Congress um, and uh, uh, was... Uh, able to, to make true difference uh, in allowing stevia to be used uh, here in the United States uh, and in Europe and now elsewhere. Uh, and um, um, he, we teased him about uh, uh, having this 30-year um, love affair with this little plant, but he was his champion and he has become known uh, as uh, uh, the father of stevia because of his his work and being able to to uh, help people understand it, its benefits and have access to it. Well, thank you to him. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Uh, let's see. Okay, here's a question from uh, my favorite local honey friend. He makes local honey. What is the chemical composition of stevia? And how does it affect insulin pancreatic function? Okay, uh, I can't give you that um, just over you know, sure. over the right now, um, but I certainly would be happy to have our chief scientific officer contact this person and okay. and discuss that uh, discuss that with. Him. Yeah, yeah, that's not exactly uh, you know. Uh, I'm not the kid. <laughs> right, water cooler chat. Um, yeah. But um, how does it affect, can you answer anything about how does it affects insulin pancreatic function? Um, it actually is has a non-glycemic response. It does not impact it. We've actually had uh, clinical studies run uh, on our packets, for example, um, uh, through the University of, of Toronto, which studies glycemic response in, in the and um, uh, uh, it, our, um, one group of packets uh, showed no glycemic response, and the organic, fully organic product uh, um, showed a, a slight dip uh, in uh, um, in the glycemic response. But so basically, wow. we we you know we say, hey, there's a non-glycemic response. It does not impact. The, um, uh, okay. the uh, wow. in any way. So. Well, that's good news. So here's, I've already touched on this a few times, but from Lisa, um, please ask her about their sourcing uh, and about synthetically engineered stevia. If they sell it, and if not, are you promising the public you will not sell it in the future? It's on the market, unlabeled stevia created artificially from GE yeast, Genet <laughs> genetically engineered. Well, these days there there are a variety of ways uh, that uh, some companies are using to um, um, quote make stevia unquote. We don't call it stevia unless it comes directly from the plant. Right. Our product are non-GMO, uh, and uh, uh, stevia itself, uh, in its true form, is non-GMO. It's not uh, right. genetically engineered or, or modified. Uh, there are, are many companies, though, today uh, that are trying to, to make stevia um, less expensively because, uh, um, you know, it is expensive to, to grow uh, a crop and certainly to grow it organically uh, and then to process it only organically. Um, so... Um, Others are trying to take uh, an approach to to get more stevia with less um, less money. Right. Um, 
we, we do not and will not do that. Uh, we, we've had many discussions, as we've heard from one um, competitor or another, as to what's happening with them. Um, uh, and we've looked at, at it, and, and we've taken a strong stand. We know who we are, right. and we know what's best for the human body. Awesome. Again, you're mission-driven. Uh, thank you. So, um, so many questions. Um, what's the controversy, this is from Mariah, what's the controversy about stevia belonging to a native community and Coke trying to steal it from them? Um, um, well, the original stevia was uh, harvested and used by the uh, Guadani Indians um, of principally Paraguay, um, uh, a very kind group of people, very good people, with whom we've worked now for over 35 years and um, uh, have a good relationship with. Uh, I don't know about uh, Coke or any other company trying to steal anything from anyone. She might, uh, she might, Carol, just mean that they're trying to make an artificial equivalent to it and therefore uh, just kind of make their own money off of it without working with them. Okay. Um, well, the feeling, and I know this uh, uh, firsthand, the feeling of the peoples of um, South, and, South and Central America, uh, um, we've, been, we've been very much a part of... Um, uh, the stevia conversation with them actually helping to engender that so many years ago um, and uh, we've been part of that ever since so I know what they're thinking and indeed they feel that nothing should be called stevia unless it really is stevia right. from the plant right. and uh, and we agree with that and yeah. that's our position uh, um, yeah, uh, cool thank so. you um, so a final reader question, I think, um, is does stevia act on the hormones? I read it was traditionally used as birth control and can lower sex hormones. Actually, um, that's an, um, there are many things can be said on the Internet uh, and not all of which is true. Uh, hmm. uh, that, is, that, um, that comes from a very long time ago, a study which is known not to have been well uh, executed uh, and uh, and it has never been replicated. Uh, it simply is not a uh, uh, birth control measure in any way, shape, or form or else there would have been no um, no increase in the population <laughs> in, in South America because it, uh, most of South America sure. enjoys uh, uh, enjoys yeah. right um, well uh, I think we've asked all the reader questions I, I think I've asked all my questions I think um, you know we've put a ton of articles in the sidebar here if people want to read those on Facebook uh, is there any this is from Dusty maybe a good final question uh, what books or literature would you recommend to learn more about the health effects of stevia versus sugar Ah, um, well, remember, the problems with sugar have really only come to light in the past few years. Mm. Uh, and uh, there are many articles, um, both in um, uh, the top medical journals these days uh, and, uh, and in other scientific journals. But to have a book, there really isn't one as yet. Uh, maybe it needs to be written. Right. Uh, and... Uh, um, uh, but we can certainly give a lot of sources if people are interested please contact us uh, and like us on on our Facebook page as sure, well um, please yeah you know, so we, we tagged uh, Sweet Leaf in the intro uh, we've been honored to work with you um, you can click that in the intro and, and like their page uh, more importantly just give it a try it's uh, natural it's organic it, it's mission driven it's been around for 35 years. It's not here overnight to take advantage of people. 
sugar is a real problem. Uh, I've re referred repeatedly, we have great articles on our site, but I've referred repeatedly to this Month Without Sugar article in the New York Times that doesn't touch on stevia, but does touch on the problem, the larger context, in a, in a way that got through to me um, and kind of blew my mind. And uh, I have a good friend, David, who I work with at Elephant, um, who has been trying with limited success to go sugar-free for many months. And it's been really impressive uh, to see him, you know, uh, very intelligent, capable person really struggle to eliminate their sugar, added sugars in so many different things. Um, and right. And like you said, we don't have to be super uptight about it. We have a little budget, but it's a slim budget for the amount of added sugar we can healthfully consume. And one single, you know, a, uh, you know juice or um, whatever, the ketchup, all the things it's added to um, can, can or cannot blow our budget. Is that accurate? Yes, that's accurate. Uh, yeah. We need to become much more aware of the uh, sugars in our diet and... Uh, um, uh, even juices right. men have a, a lot of sugar added and uh, so yeah. we, we need to take care yeah that's one article I'm proud of in, in Elephant you know all, all of our readers are say are juicing and um, uh, you know smoothie fans and uh, a lot of that stuff can you know you're taking out the fiber off and you're taking out a lot of the what nature intended it to be a whole food and uh, you're just pounding Sugars, and even though it has, it's healthier certainly than whatever some soda uh, company. Um, you know, it's hey, still. These are a great food. Just use uh, use some of our drops or, or a packet or two in it, and uh, mm. and you add no carbs and no sugars uh, right. and no calories. So awesome. Well, Carol, thank you so much for your long work and uh, um, and your husband's long work, um, and thank you for your time and your patience with all our questions today. Thank you so much. It's been yeah. a joy. Yeah, it's been an honor. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Sweet Leaf Stevia.